Now that we have set up everything that we really need, including the content class, it is time for us to actually start using the SQLi database. So far, we haven't done anything with it, more than adding the packages that we're going to be adding. So during this lecture, we're going to be coding some functionality inside of the save button clicked event handler. So in there, we are saving a new contact inside of a new table. So what is it that we have to do in here? Well, first of all, we're going to need to create the contact that we're going to be saving. Thankfully, we already have all of these entries where the user can write the name of the contact, the last name, the email, the phone number and the address. Unfortunately, up until now, we really don't have a way to read whatever is in these entries. And you may already know the answer to this one, but we have to do something very similar to what we did with the button. And that is to assign a name to these entries. So later on, we can actually access them through the main page. Remember that we saw that Xamarin automatically, when we set a name to an element in SAML, it creates the actual property inside of the main page class. Not in any of these two files that we have available, but in one that is actually hidden by default. So what I'm going to do is simply assign some names to these entries. The first one is going to be the name entry. And I do recommend that you come up with some naming convention that is going to make it easy for you to identify one entry from another. In my case, all I do is write what this entry is about, for example, last name, and that this is an entry indeed. Similar to what we have with the button in here, then uh, save button name is very easy to assume that this is a button and that is used to save something. So this other is going to be the email entry. I will also have the phone entry and finally the address entry. And so now that my entries have names, so all I have to do is come back to the main page.saml.cs where I have this event handler for the click of the button and create a new contact. Now contact is a class that I have in a different namespace because I have it on a different folder. So I will need to add using directive to that namespace, which is contacts.classes, different to the namespace where these main page is located on. And so I am going to be creating a new contact. Now I can use this notation in C sharp to be able to create this new contact immediately with some values. So I can assign the initial value for the name property, which in fact is going to be the text that is written inside of the name entry. Just like this, we can access that text, whatever text the user has written in here. And so the name of this new contact will already have that text assigned at creation. And we can do the same thing for the last name, the same thing for the email, the same thing, what's next, the phone number, and finally the address. Now, of course, I cannot do this for the ID. Remember that I also have an ID property inside of the contact, but that, if you remember, is going to be set to auto increment, thanks to this SQLite attribute. So I have the contact that needs to be inserted. Now, the next part is the actually important part, the one where we're going to be inserting this into the database. And this is going to be very straightforward, but I do want you to notice the notation that we're going to be using in here, the syntax. So what I'm going to do is use a using a statement. This is going to be different from a using directive. And in fact, it's entirely different in, in its functionality. But instead of this using statement, I am going to be creating a new SQLite connection. Now the SQLite connection class is inside of the SQLite namespace. So I can either write SQLite.SQLite connection or add a using directive 
which is different from a using statement again, to SQLite. So I don't need to write it down and I can just write SQLite connection. This is going to be the connection and it's going to be equal to a new SQLite connection. Now notice in here that the constructor for the SQLite connection requires a database path. And it so happens we already have that inside of the app class as a static property that we can access immediately. So just like this, we have initialized a new SQLite connection connecting to a specific file that we are receiving through a specific path that you remember we set to something different from Android and from iOS. And so no matter what project is running this, this is going to work because both from Android and iOS, we are setting this value. Okay, so we have this using statement, different from a using directive, which simply tells this file that it should use a specific namespace to search for types or other things. The using statement, what it's going to do is make a specific element exist only inside of its context. In this case, the connection. Now, what this means is that as soon as the using statement is executed and the execution leaves this block of code, the connection is going to be disposed. Now, we can only do this, use a using statement, with classes that implement the I disposable interface, this interface right here. Because that interface makes the classes add a method that is called dispose. Notice that precisely the SQLite connection contains a dispose method. This dispose method is here because the connection, the SQLite connection class, implements the I disposable. And so this using statement is going to automatically call that dispose method for us. And what that is going to do is actually going to close the connection to this SQLite database. Now we could always close it by calling the close method, but I do greatly recommend that you use this syntax so you don't have to remember to close the connection every time because you can always have one connection to the database at a time. So if you weren't closing the connection in here, you wouldn't later be able to connect again and maybe read from the database. So that is why we're going to be using this notation. Now, the important thing in here, let's go ahead and insert into the database. Of course, to be able to insert into the database, we need a table. So let's first go ahead and create a table. Notice that the create table exists inside of the connection. And in fact, there are a couple of create table methods. The one that I want to use is the generic one, which is going to be requesting inside of these angle brackets, what table we're going to be creating. And that is going to be the contact table. And we don't need to pass anything to the method. And that's it. Just like this, I told you it was going to be easy. Just like this, thanks to that package that we imported, we have created a table that is going to be called in the same way that this class is. And it's going to have one column for each of the properties of this class. Thanks precisely to that package that we imported. And so now that we have the table, we can make sure that we can insert into it. Now there is an insert method. Again, I told you this was going to be very easy. The same SQLite connection class con contains an insert method that will receive any kind of object. So we can pass the contact. And of course, this method is going to be smart enough to know that this object is of type contact, so it should be inserted to the contact table. Now, if there was no table that corresponds to this type, this would throw an exception. So it's very important that you create a table before inserting. Now, the insert method is actually going to return an integer with the amount of rows that were 
modified or in this case added. So let's take a look at the rows added variable that is going to be equal to con.insert. So I'm going to set a breakpoint in here to run this because so far we are not really reading from the database. So the only way to know if this was successful is to inspect the value of rows added. If we insert a new contact after clicking the save button, and if it was successful, rows added should be one. If it is not one, if it is zero, we are going to have to take a look at what we are doing wrong. But I think everything is correctly correctly set up now. Let's just run this on the simulator. I'm going to use the iOS simulator, of course. This is going to work in the exact same way for Android. Let me just test on iOS in this case and take a look at the rows added. If the rows added is one, again, that would mean that we have inserted successfully one item inside of the database. And so in the next lecture, we will be able to read. For now, let's just go ahead and navigate to the new contact page, set a name. This is going to be me. So let's just write some things in here. I'm not going to be writing especially my email in here, nor my phone number, nor my address, just some text in here for testing. Click on save. We hit the breakpoint and we see that rows added is one. So that means that we have successfully saved one new contact that, by the way, has all of that information that I just written in those text fields, as you can see, or those entries in the case of Xamarin Forms, they are text fields on iOS. But as you can see, the ID is also set to one. This is going to auto increment, so the next one would be two. So there you have it. We have successfully inserted items into the table. In the next lecture, we're going to be reading them.